the stability of the knee joint is maintained by several ligaments like medial collateral ligament, the lateral collateral ligament, by the anterior cruciate ligament, and the posterior cruciate ligament. In order to check for the ligamentous integrity which may be compromised due to any injury happening to the particular ligament, we have the orthopedic tests for the individual ligaments. The vulgar stress test which is applied from the lateral aspect medially is to check for the integrity of the medial collateral ligament. The varus stress test is to check for the integrity of the lateral collateral ligament. We have the anterior drus test to check for the integrity of the anterior cruciate ligament as the anterior cruciate ligament prevents the anterior translation of the tibia with respect to the inferior part of the femur. The anterior translation if it is excessive it indicates there is compromise to the anterior cruciate ligament. But more better in terms of sensitivity and specificity is the Latchman's test. The knee is kept in slight flexion the just above the knee joint the distal part of the femur is stabilized and then posterior to anterior translation is applied. This is a more accurate test than that of the anterior dryas test. This is called as the Latchman's test. Similarly, we have the posterior dryas test to check for the integrity of the posterior cruciate ligament. Knee is kept in flexion position, anterior to posterior translation is applied. So, the posterior translation is more than about 1.5 to 2 centimeters, then there is compromise to the posterior cruciate ligament. And then we have several tests for the meniscus injuries. We have the McMurray's test and the Aples compression test for the meniscus injuries. For the valgus stress test, which is meant to check for the integrity of the medial collateral ligament, the subject is in supine lying position. The therapist standing just lateral to the side of the couch, that means the whichever side we are checking for, the therapist is standing just lateral to the same side. Therapist is doing the pistol grasp so that the index and mid fingers are kept over the ligament. The knee is taken for slight flexion for about 20 degrees. The first waist space is kept at upper lateral aspect of the tibia. The distal part of the leg is just grasped in between the trunk and the arm. Then from the lateral aspect pressure is applied medially in this direction. Three to four times. At the same time I am trying to palpate in the medial aspect of the joint line with the index and with the mid finger. I have to compare at the same time with the other side. If the joint opening is more than 1 centimeter, then the valgus stress test is positive in the concerned side indicating that there is involvement of the medial collateral ligament.
the virus stress test for the knee joint is performed in order to check for the integrity of the lateral collateral ligament of the knee joint. The therapist does the pistol grasp so that the index and mid fingers are kept in the lateral aspect of the joint line. The therapist is just coming medial to the limb whichever is tested. Two fingers are kept at the lateral aspect of the knee joint. The knee is kept in slight flexion position. The first OS space is kept in upper medial aspect of the tibia. The pressure is applied from the medial aspect lateral with jerks. It has to be compared with the other side. If the opening up in the lateral aspect of the joint is more than 1 centimeter that indicates there is involvement of the lateral collateral ligament of the knee joint. The anterior drudge test is performed to check for the integrity or the status of the anterior cruciate ligament. The anterior cruciate ligament prevents the anterior translation of the tibia with respect to the inferior part of the femur. The subject is in supine lying position, the hip is flexed and the knee is flexed. The knee is, is flexed for about 90 degrees and uh, just at the dorsum of the foot, the therapist is just sitting so that it is stabilized. Both hands are kept at upper posterior aspect of the tibia and posterior to anterior translation is applied for about 3 to 4 times. At the same time, we have to check for the opposite side. If the, in the same position, the translation in the opposite side compared to this side or whichever side be is becoming more than about 1.5 to 2 centimeters, that side the anterior cruciate ligament is compromised. Posterior dress test, hip is flexed, knee is flexed, the dorsum of the foot is supported by the therapist sitting on it. The first waist space is spreaded, kept anterior to the tibial tuberosity and from the anterior aspect, posterior glides are applied for about 3 to 4 times. The same movement has to be compared with the other side. If the posterior glide is more than 1.5 to 2 centimeters, then the test is positive indicating there is instability to the posterior cruciate ligament of the knee joint. The Latchman test is more accurate test to check for the anterior cruciate ligament involvement compared to the anterior dress test. The knee joint is kept in flexion for about 20 degrees. The distal ventral part of the thigh is stabilized with one hand. The other hand is placed at the posterior part of the tibia and then posterior to anterior translations are applied. The same movement has to be performed in the other knee joint. If the translation is found to be more than 1.5 to 2 centimeters compared to the other side, then the test is positive indicating involvement or compromise or injury to the anterior cruciate ligament. The SAC test is performed in order to check for the integrity of the posterior cruciate ligament. The subject is in supine lying position, the hip is flexed to 90 degrees, 
knee is flexed to 90 degrees. The calcaneum is supported. The therapist is observing from the lateral aspect of the knee joint. It is in the straight line. If the tibial tuberosity is placed posteriorly creating a gap or creating a sag, then the sag test is positive indicating instability to the posterior cruciate ligament.